Okay, welcome back to my new rule tutorial. Today I want to introduce a very nice class, which is not directly related to data analysis, but which I personally use very often. Uh, because uh, as being a particle physicist, uh, there are always some kind of particles that you have to describe in three-dimensional space, some tracks. So it's, it's very useful to use vectors. Um, and uh, in uh, root, there is one built-in uh, class, which is called tvector3. And this uh, we will now uh, take a look at. So we create as usual a new macro. Uh, now we have to adjust it. Uh, tutorial 26, we already reached quite far. And uh, <clears throat> then uh, we just uh, use this class t vector three. And this works like this, that in the constructor of um, of let's suppose uh, we call this vector v1, you can write directly the coordinates in Cart uh, the Cartesian coordinates. Yeah? So let's suppose uh, <clears throat> we would write one, two, three, which means uh, we would go uh, one in x direction, two in y direction, and three in z direction. <clears throat> and then uh, we can access these components also again with the member functions x, y, and z in capital letters. So I will just show this one time how it works for obtaining the coordinate x. So if you would write uh, uh, v1.x and you give this out, then you will get as a result one exactly uh, what you expect. So if you write v1 dot y, you would get two and so on. So it just takes um, the three coordinates uh, x, y, z. Another possibility is that you access this vector in the same way how you access a uh, an array. So you can write in brackets uh, zero for x, y for one, and two for z. And if we give this out, uh, then we will see that, of course, uh, this is the Z component, so we will get a 3 at the end. This is very simple. There are many possibilities uh, how to do several things uh, with this class, so this is basically one option how to do that. Another way <clears throat> how to obtain the, error, uh, the, um, the um, uh, parameters of this vector is by using the built-in uh, member function print, and this we can try now. So if we write v1.print and we run it, <clears throat> you will see that uh, first you get a tuple with um, which shows uh, the coordinates x, y, z as we have seen it before. And then it will also give you another, uh, another, uh, then it gives you another values about uh, rho, theta, and phi. So rho is just the magnitude of the vector, so the radius. <laughs> Theta is the polar angle and phi is the azimuth angle. So what we have here are basically uh, spherical coordinates. And sometimes it's very useful that you have not only the Cartesian information about a vector, but uh, you also get directly the three values related to spherical coordinates. I, I usually uh, like this a lot. So of course, when you write this, uh, when you use this print function, then you can get directly access to all that. Um, you of course uh, you can also um, use these values uh, rho theta and phi for further calculations and uh, for this we just create some new variables let's call it um, or let's call it rho which is basically the magnitude so it would be uh, the, the member function to obtain the magnitude of the vector is uh, just mag um, <clears throat> then we also want to obtain the theta angle the polar angle and for this it would be theta and uh, of course we can also do the same for the phi angle which would be uh, phi and <clears throat> now we can just give out all these values so um, rho and then just let's make some tap in between then the next one would be theta again a tap and then phi and uh, end line. So here you can see all the values and uh, as you notice the magnitude <clears throat> is exactly matching with that but the other two values are not and I think you know already the reason for that. This is because uh, these functions uh, return the 
uh, angles in uh, po uh, in uh, radiant. Yeah? So if you would like to have the values in degree, of course you would have to multiply it with 180 degree uh, divided with uh, divided by um, pi. And uh, yeah, pi is already built in in root, so you can use this t math class and then. Uh, pi as a static uh, as a static function basically and when you do that <coughs> then uh, you get here a value of 36 approximately which is exactly the same as you have it here in the print function yeah so the print function returns the value in degree whereas uh, the built-in functions uh, would uh, would return it in radiant but uh, this is just easy to convert basically <laughs> Another nice thing that you can do with uh, vectors, um, I mean, this is already very nice, but you could also easily rotate a vector, for example. So uh, you could just uh, write, for example, V1, rotate, and then let's let's rotate it 90 degree uh, around the z-axis. Uh, so we can write, uh, rotate z 90 times t math pi divided by 180 degree uh, because uh, again this function takes uh, the angle in uh, radiant so and now um, <clears throat> we can again print this function and see what changed and uh, yeah the z value of course remains the same this makes fully sense because we rotate it around the z axis but these other values x and y uh, change. They basically swap with some minus sign, so it's just a rotation uh, of by 90 degree. And to prove that, you can take a look at the uh, rho, theta, and phi coordinates, <clears throat> and you find out that uh, basically rho and uh, rho and theta remain constants. Only phi changes by adding a value of 90 degree. So everything is consistent, and uh, it proves that basically this function is working very well. <clears throat> Then we come to another nice thing, which is basically uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, operations between two vectors. So we can define another vector, which is called, for example, v2. And <clears throat> instead of writing now the values into the constructor, I will now uh, set it in a different way, which is completely equivalent. Uh, there is no, um, no difference, but just another way how to do it. So you can write uh, zx4, zy5, for example, and um, Z, uh, z would be 6. <clears throat> and again, we can uh, print this value just to prove that it works and to show that I'm not uh, explaining rubbish. And as you can see here, uh, we have the same values, uh, 4, 5, and 6, for the x, y, and z coordinate. Okay. <laughs> Um, and now, um, before I will explain what you can do with two vectors together, uh, another interesting uh, approach how to define a vector would be uh, not to set the x and y z coordinate, but directly to insert the values in polar coordinates. And in order to do that, you first have to define the magnitude of the vector, which would be, of course, by de defining the magnitude, would be uh, would give a zero vector, uh, which makes no sense at all. Multiplying a value with zero is still zero, but you can set or you can make a workaround by uh, setting the z axis or the z component to any value which you want. I mean, to the magnitude itself, which let's suppose would be ten, and um, then. Uh, you can use the functions set theta for setting the polar angles. So let's say we want uh, um, polar angle of 10 degree. And the same we can also do, of course, for the azimuth angle, which is set phi. And then let's suppose we want to rotate it by uh, 45 degree. So, and if we now uh, print this vector, um, 3 v3 print and you take a look at the vector here which comes out you get here the uh, converted coordinates in xyz and additionally of course the polar coordinates and uh, sorry the spherical coordinates and since we have defined the spherical coordinates directly uh, it uh, they are completely correct so the magnitude is as i said 10 the phi, the theta angle is also 10 and the azimuth angle, phi angle is in this case 45 degree. So this works also very well. Uh, this is a trick maybe which you can remember in the future uh, because it can help you a lot. And now 
we define another vector, which we call maybe uh, v4, uh, v4. And now uh, we can use v1 and just add it, for example, to vector v2. So we have an, a vector addition of two vectors. And when we then <coughs> print out this vector uh, v4, then at the end you see <coughs> that you have uh, the addition of two vectors and uh, this would be that one and this one. So you have uh, minus two plus four, which gives two, one plus five gives six and three plus, uh, three plus six gives nine. Uh, so also that works very well. <coughs> this is the easiest way how to do that. So in the um, vector class, this addition is already defined in such a way. And of course you can also do more things. Let's suppose we want to uh, calculate the dot product between these vectors. So we can either write our own function or we can just use the built-in function, which would be v1, for example, dot v2 <coughs> end line. And uh, yeah, we can run it. And as you see here, we get the dot product of these two vectors, which we have to believe is now correct, 15. Uh, and it's just basically the um, multiplication of all, uh, sorry, the yeah the uh, multiplication of each component with each other, and then uh, the sum of all these uh, products. And uh, now we can do also, for example, calculate the angle between two vectors v1 and v2. Um, either we do this manually, of course, or we use just the function uh, angle. Uh, and at the end, you get the result of 1.09 because again, this is in uh, polar, in, in radiant, and uh, we can now um, convert it just for cross check into uh, into uh, degree, and we get as a result 62.8 degree, which we also have to believe is correct. But if you want to prove that, you can also calculate this by hand and just check whether the results are consistent, okay? Yeah, <clears throat> so this is, uh, I think, a very nice and a very helpful class to do that. So I just want to share that with you and uh, hopefully you can use this in a good way to um, yeah, improve your analysis and maybe rewrite your code, make it shorter and uh, save a lot of time in writing uh, instead of writing all the, all the uh, functions which you have here yourself. Okay, uh, hopefully I can continue very soon. Uh, please stay tuned, um, yeah subscribe if you have not done so far and uh, then uh, hopefully see you soon back.